Well, it rained last night and it rained and rained. We have water everywhere. Look how soft this is. I can't even step in this stuff anymore. It's turned to complete muck. Awesome. We have, looks to me like, probably a good two inches of standing water right there. So clearly, our drainage is working, but it's not daylighting the way we want it to. And I'm adding to it. <clears throat> Where do you think this water's coming from? Take a guess. <sighs> Trick question. It's coming from the tarp that is covering our subfloor right now. I We have been chasing this for, gosh, we're coming up on a week now. Every day it just keeps raining harder and harder. So that tarp right there is our stair opening. You can see how much water's in there. There's probably, right now, 30 gallons of water in that tarp. And I put the siphon on there probably 10 minutes ago. So there might've been 40 gallons in there. Easy. I came out here the other night and this tarp looked like it was about to burst. And it was raining harder and harder and it was gonna rain all night. And I thought what we would come out to in the morning was a swimming pool. <sighs> this is exhausting. So we're trying to create a dry work area but with the wind, the tarp is getting damaged and we need to do something. I think maybe Alyssa's dad is gonna help us when he gets here today because I have no time to deal with this and create kind of an arch in here with some plywood or something, some thin plywood just to kind of create a, a dome shape so that water won't run into there anymore. The last thing we need is a swimming pool dumping inside the garage, right? I think it's hard because what, a month ago, all we did was whine about the heat. And we want the rain. We want rain. Rain means water and snow. Like, mountains around us are definitely covered in snow. It's pretty chilly this morning, but definitely not close to freezing. So I guess there's a good side to rain. Usually it means you're not freezing. The bad news is, everything is soggy. Thankfully, whew, man, I haven't been over here yet. What a mess. Like an ocean over here standing water everywhere. It was raining so hard this morning when I got up that I thought, I don't think we're gonna get any saw milling done today. Wow, so all the sawdust that I spread out is just, wow. There's actually like creeks. There's actually little creeks running from here to there. Wow, this is one soggy mess. And here we thought we would get home from dinner and run the sawmill for a little while. We knew with this build that weather would eventually become a factor. And we've tried all along to try to stay ahead of schedule. And we're, we're right on schedule, if not a little bit behind still. No matter how hard we try to catch up, it seems like we just can't. Yesterday the backhoe battery died. Day before that we blew a tire on the backhoe. Lots of problems, little problems keep piling up. So today our goal is to get these logs gone. I've got one on the mill, I've got four on the ground. Statistically, it's not gonna happen. This is gonna be floor joists. Has too much bend in the butt. This is not long enough, it's 23 feet. So, floor joists. This one, I think I can get a rafter out of. And this one, you can see the amount of curl in that log. Floor joists. So the goal is to make these logs disappear. Tomorrow's Monday, we've got that log left to go. And tomorrow we're hoping that the rain lets up today and we can get up to the loggers property and we'll get a whole fresh load of logs coming in tomorrow. Where are we with milling? We are cruising right along. I've had to become more and more aggressive, but I've also been learning a lot of tricks that save me a lot of time. For example, one log I cut yesterday, <clears throat> I did what call, I call four siding a log. I made four cuts and that's it to get the timber that I needed. And that is pretty rare for me because you can't always read the log, especially with the bark on it. You can't tell what's hiding underneath that bark. Sometimes there's a little dip or a little waste or a valley. So I tend to make more conservative cuts at first until I can really get a good bearing on the log. And then I start picking and choosing where my cuts go. One of these I called the beam from hell because it had 
a dip in this side and a curl in that side. So I chased it and I ended up making very small final cuts to take just a little wane off, off this side and a little wane off that side and a little wane off this side and a little wane off that side. That one rafter probably took me over four hours. And then the next rafter took me an hour and a half. <laughs> this is why it's really hard to predict how each day is gonna go. But the good news is we're turning out some beautiful timbers. Pretty good pile of floor joists going over there. At some point today, hopefully, maybe, we need to get this pile of rafters moved, or timbers. These floor joists need to come over here, and then all these long pieces need to move over here. That's why it's important that we get it done so we can stop wait, making double work for ourselves, basically. So thankfully, we've got some backup arriving. Alyssa's parents are on the road today. They've got a bit of a drive, so I don't think they'll be here early, but it'll be nice to have some backup. They're gonna help with just kind of daily chores, and uh, hopefully Alyssa's dad can jump in and maybe give us some help with some of the uh, braces and planing and general things like that. This one, as cute as he is, kept us up all night, meowing up a storm at 2 a.m. He wanted to go outside, but it was raining, so he was feeling, I don't know, like he had cabin fever or something. So he's been a little lovey this morning because he's worried we're gonna get rid of him. Jesse wants you guys to see this. Ready? This is how much it rained last night. Simmer down now. Ready? Yeah. Well, Ready? don't splash me with it. Wow. No wonder the ground is flooded. I put on all my warm clothes today. Walked out here, the sun's showing, clouds are going away, and it's getting hot. Ooh, that's balanced. Balanced on the first try of the first rafter of the day must mean it's gonna be a good day today. Looking forward to my parents arriving. They left uh, Bend, Oregon pretty early this morning. Whoa, Nelly. So I think they should be arriving here, I don't know, sometime late afternoon. Where can we go? I can't see over there. Just have to go over here. Okay. Happy? <laughs> hmm. That's really long. Which tree should we do today? I'll tell you that the tree I just took off of there looked like it would have yielded an eight by 12 no problem. And you barely got I a 6 by 12. Barely. In fact, there's like this much wane on one side. This is why the whole tree diameter thing is, is bogus. So the one I just milled was nearly 16 inches. This one's 14 and a half Oof. on this end. So let's measure him and see where 27 feet is. The question is, is that hook too bad? See, my tape's pretty straight right here. Yeah. And uh, I'm well past the center of this log. We actually only need a 25 and a half foot rafter. So we're actually aiming clear back here. But I'm over milling them to give us some leeway. So if at that knot I cut it and then I take maybe like a foot off of this side, that'd put me at 26 and a half feet and that's actually okay um, 25 and a half is our actual length so I think I will do that because I don't think it's big enough on that end mm -hmm. and this hook is too much on this end all that's going to add up to another hard log to make a rafter out of so
farm today. There we go. Wow. We're officially out of bar oil. In a short amount of time, we went through, I think, an entire gallon. Jesse can correct me if I'm wrong. Good news is that we don't have to drive all the way to Home Depot to get more because my parents are bringing it on their way up. I think I want that big log. The one everything's on? And this, friends, is what absolute exhaustion looks like. Not sure if you can see this, but this tree is in a U shape. So I'm wondering if Jesse's gonna want to cut it in half. This obviously is not going to result in a rafter. Yep, exactly. That looks right on my end. What is this going to be, floor joists? Yep. That's 27 feet, so that'll work out. It'll be a 12 footer in here. how much water or rain we got it is two inches wow, that's crazy that's stupid no wonder why, is a spasm. No wonder why everything's flooded um we probably want a fourth for the long stuff um long stuff's not going over here long oh. stuff's staying over there because we're gonna lift it and then we're gonna sticker it in place that's <sighs> pretty good so yeah, we need to move, put this here, move all that here, yep. and then we'll lift one end of that big stuff okay. and put our staging timber underneath, okay. and then lift the other end to put staging timber underneath. Okay. Poo. My 
my knot came undone. You know, I, I can't tell what it's hung up on. Jesse's to a point where he doesn't need me and firewood is all caught up and we've kind of worked on our staging area a bit but that's kind of at a stopping point until Jesse's available. My parents arrived and they are busy unpacking their car, the place they're going to be staying. They did us a really awesome favor and picked up a couple of adjustable folding sawhorses that we had on hold at Home Depot. I think Jesse wanted to do an unboxing on these because why we bought these particular ones? Uh oh. Do you need me? I was ring, so I better go check on him. Jesse, change the channel. Someone's on that channel. Someone called me, so I came to check on you. Oh. Wasn't you? No, it wasn't me. Some people perceive that us not doing formal introductions to visitors on our YouTube channel is a huge sign of disrespect. And I couldn't disagree more. Believe it or not, this here that we have, it's not a TV show or a YouTube show. It's our life. Believe it or not, people are actually coming here to see us or to help us not to be on our YouTube channel, if that makes sense. Not that they can't be on our YouTube channel, but we tried to make people's visit not about the camera. First and foremost, we're appreciative that people come to visit or to help us. Um, and camera really comes second, if at all. So just because someone isn't formally introduced on camera doesn't mean that we're trying to like keep them from getting fame. Believe it or not, most people don't want fame. Not that we're famous or anything. Most people don't love the camera. So we really try to have cameras be in the background, not to have like everything be about the camera. We don't go running it around, sticking it in people's faces. Not everyone wants to introduce themselves to, you know, our 250,000 followers and whatnot. So just thought I'd get that out of the way. My parents will be back in about two hours with dinner, which we are stoked. We're gonna try this out tonight. Our theory is that if dinner is brought to us and we can kind of eat in the garage and we don't have to make dinner or go out to eat that we could actually take a dinner break and get back to work for a couple of hours where so far what by the time we eat dinner um, we're just flat out pooped we really don't want to get back to work again so let's test this theory tonight wow these are heavy hopefully they come with assembly instructions it's kind of cool they come in a carrying case so these are tough built sawhorses slash job site tables. I'm not sure how this works exactly, but Jesse wanted these specifically because they have the ability to turn into a table when you put two of them together, which is cool. And the adjustability is huge. I'm not sure how strong these are if we can set timbers um, directly on them. I'm sure some of the smaller timbers that we can, but it's gonna be really nice to be able to lower these for me um, based on what we're working on because our sawhorses now are way too high for me to plan on. So, Ooh. you guys wanna know why I never do unboxings? Because I suck at unboxings. This is as low as the sawhorse goes and that's pretty good. That's about mid thigh height on me, maybe a little lower than that. Um, and I can see planing here being very comfortable. So how the adjustability works is you pull this lever here and the legs come out like that. Sweet deal. 
Yay, Jesse, four floor joists. I think we can get that other log milled up. It'll be close. If I can buck it into smaller logs, it'll go faster. The good news is, is if we do that, we can. if we wake up like at the butt crack of dawn, there'll be no work to do, so we might as well sleep in. <laughs> yeah, I think what's gonna happen is that's gonna get bucked down and the butt's gonna come off, and then I might actually be better off cutting it huh. in half. And then uh, the small logs I can handle really easily by myself. It's these monsters, yeah. anything like 24, 25, 27 feet, just turning the log is like everything yeah. I have. And then when it comes crashing down, it ruins the sawmill. The small logs don't hardly, I mean, and you can't get off very far in 10 feet on the sawmill. It's when it's 27 feet long, you know, sawmill does that number, so. Let's get this log moved. Yeah. This, this log was 23 feet wrong. It's 23, 22 feet, 10 inches. <laughs> and these floor joists are 11 feet, four inches. If you do the math, that doesn't leave much room and the ends aren't so square. So only the experienced get to cut these. Yes, and the ends aren't square and this isn't square, which means there's only about three quarters of an inch or half an inch of fudge no in pressure. these floor joists. So whoever gets these, don't screw Sorry. up your first cuts. <laughs> these are for after your first cuts. Said we're gonna push it off the mill and worry about it tomorrow. What you thinking? Chop it to 24, leave the butt out here, put it on the mill, and then we'll buck it into half and probably split the halves up, something like that. Floor joists? Oh, it's pure floor joists, yeah. This this log never had any other timber in it. It's too crooked. It'll really start to show once it's on the mill. I mean, this thing. Oh yeah. Have you it. heard from our truck driver today? Uh, no. It shouldn't be raining, which means I we should be talk, on. I need to call him. We need to be. We need to be. We have to get logs tomorrow. Like, pronto. Like, like 8 a.m. at the latest. Well, 8 a.m. is what we're planning on, so we'll see. See that? That's so beautiful. But there's no time to appreciate it. Alright guys, it's starting to rain again. Bye camera! Well, I think that's about it for the night. We got the last log on the mill, but we decided not to start milling it because it's not really great to mill in the dark. I think once you get the first two cuts done, it's okay. But seeing as we're getting logs, hopefully at 8 a.m. tomorrow, we figure we can wake up early and hopefully blow through that last log. As of now, we're still thinking we should have everything milled up before the workshop begins. Even once the workshop begins, if there's a couple more things to mill, it shouldn't be a problem. I mean, it's definitely not ideal. It's not what we're aiming for. All we know is that we've given it 110% every single day since we started designing our house back in February. We just could not possibly work any harder. Jesse bashed his head on the backhoe today. I bashed my elbow first thing in the morning on the grapple and there's a welt on it. My entire elbow is swollen and it really scared me because I couldn't move my arm for a full minute. I mean, I knew it wasn't broken, but it was definitely more than a little bump. So hopefully I can move my arm tomorrow, but 
It's okay. I mean, I don't need my elbow that much anyways. So we also stopped because we got a new battery for the backhoe. We do believe the old battery was bad, except Jesse believes the alternator isn't quite working. It's not putting out the voltage that it should be. So unfortunately our battery doesn't have high voltage right now. It's not charging properly. So we're going to go ahead. Jesse had to run to storage to get our small battery charger. So we're going to go ahead and charge that overnight. If we have to charge it every night, we will because we don't have time to fix the backhoe right now. We don't believe at this point that we bought a lemon. It's just an older piece of equipment and it needs some maintenance. So that said, we did a really great job moving timbers around today. As you can see, our work area looks amazing. My parents should be here very shortly with some dinner. We're really excited about that. We haven't even gotten to talk to them yet. I did warn them that until the workshop happens, we really can't talk that much. We really have to stay focused, which is hard because I haven't seen my parents in many months, but they totally understand that. They're here to help in whatever way we need help. Um, we'll probably talk tonight and see what other tasks we can pawn off onto them. I might see if I can get my dad to cut the braces. Jesse thinks that's fairly straightforward or maybe planing. I mean, I don't totally have that figured out yet, but I think once we have a system, he might be able to plane. Not really sure. So they should be here any minute. We're going to go ahead and end this video. Jesse, Jesse should be back and we're really going to think about how we can best use their help. Also, Anna, Jesse's sister, she's coming later in the week as well. So yeah, sometimes it's good to spend a little more time planning than it is working because at this point, the two of us were really risking not being 100% ready. But I can admit that because this won't be published until after the workshop is over and you will know that everything worked out totally fine. Here's the gourmet dinner table in the future bathroom of our garage. I don't think anyone here has a problem with that. Cause at the end of the day, good food is good food. Doesn't matter where you eat it. I will, however, probably give the table a wipe down. That's not that dirty, just a little dirty. You know how Jesse and I are with ice cream? That's how my parents are with wine. I told them, I can't wait for you to enjoy your first glass of wine in our garage. And I think they're pretty excited too because they've only been to our property once. So they've been like you guys, just keeping tabs on YouTube.